All right. Bill Shatner went to space, apparently. You've probably heard about this in the news, that Bezos set this up and sent Shatner to the upper part of the atmosphere where he could, you know, you're basically in space. There's zero Gs for a short time, but I wanted to play a few clips because I think there's an agenda behind a lot of what William Shatner is saying in these interviews. I'm just going to play a couple quick clips and just pay, pay close attention to the, what you think the agenda might be behind the message that he's bringing back because he seems to have had a profound and long-lasting, you know, experience, a, an experience with long-lasting effects. Just check this out. Play these clips. Dang! <laughs> they deployed. Wow. They're like, okay, what? I'm going to be all right unless... <laughs> and then they've got... They've got boosters on the bottom of that thing, so you don't hit it too hard. And and if they don't go go off, something terrible will happen. And they do go off, and that's startling. The whole thing was indescribable. Yeah. So th so all this rehearsal we did, uh, training they call it. I call it rehearsal. <laughs> You're in and out of. Yeah, he calls it calls it rehearsal. I thought that was kind of weird. You know, this is just. I mean, it's a big public thing, big PR thing for. Uh, Bezos and his company and all that, but yeah, he call it, he calls it rehearsal. I thought that was funny. Chairs using muscles, and in this case, ninety-year-old muscles that uh, are unaccustomed. Uh, I am stiff and sore, and I <laughs> ache. And I, uh, <laughs> well, you, I mean, what a thrilling ten minutes. It had everything. It, I, we're so happy we're that so happy you're, you're here. Back. It yeah, had it feels everything. Good. Yeah, and, and the realization once again. The fragility of this planet, yes, the yeah. coming uh, catastrophic event, and we all... Coming catastrophic event. Now, he speaks as though he, he's talking about a specific event that is... I mean, he sounds pretty sure that it's going to happen. It's unavoidable. He kind of 180s a little bit in, in his other comments, but he's speaking as if it's coming and there's nothing we can do about it. That's the impression. The coming cataclysmic event. That's what he says. So, he said... And he, he's referencing a climate, something climate related, because he goes on to talk about how we're not taking care of the planet. We all have to clean this act up now. Well yeah. said. Well I, said. I, keep, I kept thinking about that, saying they said when you go to space, they should have sent a poet, you yes. know, to describe it. Well, they kind they of did. did. Bill Shatner. Thank oh, did they? Uh, I also wanted to play this clip really quick. He has something interesting to say here. Forces of five and six G forces. Who's been in weightlessness? How do you describe weightlessness? Yeah. It, being in it is totally different from any description you can have. You're floating, but you're floating. Your, your gut is floating. Your head is floating. <laughs> uh, outside is you're you're immersed in things that are indescribable and every, and, and because people, the, the 600 people who've been there say, oh yeah, it's dark. And I'm telling you it's dark. I'm telling you it's dark. <laughs> hey, Bill, <Okay>? Bill. <laughs> and that's We light. believe that's you. Yeah, say what you will about his acting. I mean, he is an actor. He's really trying to play this up, how profound it was. And the messaging behind this is just, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me. We believe you. I was so moved. And, and, and what I wanted, uh, when I said I want to hold on to it, it's like a truth that suddenly comes to you. Mm. And you don't want to dissipate it. You don't want to lose it. You want to hold it for the rest of your life, tuck it somewhere. But there is something coming our way, folks, that we've got to avoid. And the only way to... Now he speaks of this calamity that now it's avoidable, that we can't avoid. But, you know, how... You know, you, you, he made it sound like in the clip before that it's just unavoidable and it's coming. All right, you know, I, I think a lot of these celebrities are privy to things that we are not. And they, they, they know what's going to happen. And I think a lot of this is, is programming so that when something does happen, some disaster, mega disaster, that it's because of our transgressions. And what they're trying to portray, you know, what they're trying to project here is it's going to be because of our transgressions against Mother Nature, you know, this mother goddess archetype that they're sort of playing up. To avoid it is to look at it. We need to clean our, our planet up now or our yeah. grandchildren are going to be in terrible shape. Well, Bill, uh, William, uh, if everybody 
or a good portion of us were able to have the experience that you are describing this morning, if it were more widespread, how do you think the world might be a different place? Well, before he goes on to answer, just want to put it out there that he's had this spiritual experience. He's using all this spiritual language. It was beautiful, profound. You can't describe it. And then what message does he come back with? Not, not love your neighbor, not come to, you know, they say a lot that a lot of times anyway, but he comes back saying, clean the planet up. That is the most, that, I mean, that's the message you come back with. That's, I, I don't buy it. And it's just, it seems to fit perfectly into a, a certain agenda that you probably have heard all about. Because it's so easy. What's coming our way, we all know this, what's coming our way is horrific. So it's easier to say. And I just want to say real quick, the science is not settled on that. There are many scientists that say that the planet is actually cooling and that just like countless cycles before, that scientists claim ice ages that we've had before, we're going into another one and we will go into another ice age eventually. That's just settled science. Not saying it's happening now necessarily, but some scientists are saying that. But it has to be doom and gloom with these people. They have to project the fact that it's, we are all going to, you know, Florida is going to be underwater. The East Coast is going to disappear. Terror, you know, they, I mean, they've been saying this since the, since the uh, early and mid 90s, that by the year 2000, the early 2000s, that the East Coast was just going to, I mean, the, it was just going to obliterate the East Coast. And it just never happened. It was like the, the cutoff was like 2010, 2012, and they keep pushing it back. And just, it's just fear mongering in my opinion. But. Bury your head in the sand. Oh, well, I'm not gonna think about it. You have to think about it. And it's terrible to think about. It's terrible that they're building 20 foot walls in Miami to in front of people's homes who spent millions of dollars for the view of the ocean. And they're erecting a 20 foot wall because the seas are rising. Half of Florida is going to be underwater. Do you realize half of Florida is going to be underwater in our children's mm. lifetime? Wow. I mean, William, it's crazy. I have, to, I have to ask you. I mean, it's it's just fear mongering to me, in my opinion. But if you disagree with, I mean, I'd love to hear in the comments what you think. If you disagree with me or you agree with me, whatever. But I think this is just fear mongering and more propaganda being put out by the climate change nut jobs so uh i will see you guys in the next video and uh let me know what you think